Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to check out the new Epiphone SG model. So you guys remember when like the Epiphone Lazarus Les Paul came out or any of those other 59 reissues that Epiphone did to give you like a really nice highly specced Epiphone in a Les Paul format? This is what the new 61 SG standard from Epiphone is doing. Except for this time it's an SG format. Now I'm really curious. I bought this from Sweetwater and those guys take all those photographs of everything that you're buying right so you can choose what wood grain you want and whatnot but the stock photos of this one had a, a joe bonamassa case which i didn't understand i'm curious is that what this is no okay i don't know why they had a joe bonamassa case pictured but no this one just has the regular one so let's go ahead and get this thing open learn a little bit about sgs and whether this thing's worth it or not inside oh wow yep same very very bright pink but now we have a red sg okay so 61 sg that is the first official year that the sg body style was invented like it was still called the last paul for a couple of years but if you need to learn more about that subject you can check out my anniversary custom shop video right here so epiphone came out with this to kind of step up and revamp the original 61 style one that they have that they have now just renamed 60s sg standard since it would probably kind of get a little bit confusing having two of them being called a 61. So this is the highest end SG that you can purchase from Epiphone at this time. So what have they changed here? We now have Gibson Burst Bucker pickups in here, Burst Bucker 2 and 3 which is just absolutely phenomenal because the electronics in these things had already been upgraded. So this is like uh, Gibson tones on a budget. How much are these things costing? $850, which might seem kind of expensive, but let's go through all these other specs that they've changed. You can check out my other Epiphone reviews. You see how that has a veneer on the top? That's there to hide all the different body seams. These guys are a straight up two piece of mahogany body. So you no longer have any of those kind of strange looking veneers, which some people just did not like. Other guys did like them. So maybe you still want to buy the original one, but these are two piece bodies. And no, not all of them are going to have flame figuring. I mean, that's why I decided to pick this one up right away and pay the price. Because, yeah, flamed mahogany on an SG from Epiphone, that, that's pretty cool. Even if it is only on one side of the body. And that's where the sponsor of today's episode comes in handy. Sweetwater. I'm sure you heard of them throughout your guitar gear travels. That's my favorite thing about their shop. If they have inventory, you can actually view each and every single one. Hey, you can see this is the exact guitar we're reviewing today. That you're able to pre-order through them. But let's say you're shopping around for a sweet Les Paul standard. Here you go. You can see all four. So you can select between series number say you're trying to find like an anniversary date or a birthday you can even chop by weight like this guy's almost 10 pounds whereas this guy's almost nine so maybe you want to choose the lighter one versus the prettier one but it's not just of the front they do the angled shots full shots as well as the back shot Whenever I'm hunting for specific wood grains, a dealer like this is very beneficial. And if you're not sure what you should be buying, you can call in and they have a personalized gear advisor for you to tell you what you might like, as well as different payment options. So be sure to visit them at sweetwater.com or you can follow that channel supporting link down in the description. But just like I was talking in that Lazarus review, they've upgraded the neck to be one piece as well. So you no longer have a scarf joint back here. Most Epiphones, they'll have a scarf joint right here and then they'll have a scarf joint down here. This is just a single piece of wood so that's another nice little upgrade that they've done here if you care about that kind of stuff technically a scarf joint is stronger but this is more historically correct and they have to use a larger piece of lumber which could be perceived as higher quality to make this instrument i mean if you're just a kid learning how to play does it really matter no but if you're a guy who loves gibson specs but has an epiphone budget that's where these things start to come in handy we still have the Indian Laurel fretboard, which is a bit of a letdown. An upgrade to Rosewood would have been cool. But in case you missed it, we also have a case. So now let's compare prices. As previously mentioned, this is closest to the 60s SG standard in Epiphone's lineup, and those are $549. You can see this new one is $300 more expensive, or $250 more expensive if you wanted one of the ones with the Vibrola. But that's when you factor in the case, the two-piece mahogany body, one-piece neck, and the Gibson Burst Bucker pickups, and that's worth way more than $300. I mean, these pickups used, instantly worth at least $200. This case, 
price at least worth 100 probably up to 200 and that's not even accounting for the fact that you know you've got the wooden upgrades so if you're looking at epiphones and epiphones only it's a no-brainer to upgrade to one of these if you were just going to put gibson pickups and electronics in here anyway but one last comparison point i do want to make these are actually 50 dollars cheaper than the epiphone prophecy series those have high-end pickups as well the fishman fluence pups but i'm guessing since those aren't in-house made by them that's why those guys are a little bit more expensive because i mean gibson they make the gibson pickups they don't have to pay as much for them however i mean you can also comparison shop to other brands 850 bucks is gonna buy you a lot of stuff so maybe try one at a store if you can to decide you know whether it's right for you or not this review is just capturing my first impressions of it as a guy who has owned and played a lot of gibson guitars so you can choose these in two different finishes. There's the 60s age cherry red like this, and then they also have a sweet aged classic white. Now, personally, I probably would have went with the white one, but we had just reviewed that fake SG that turned out not to be a fake SG, and that was a white one. So I figured we would swap it up a little bit here and the, the flame mahogany really sold me on this one. First impressions, uh, the neck is about what I was expecting, maybe not quite as wide as some of these can be. I mean, it's still pretty wide feeling. It's got more of like a, a D-shaped neck, I would want to say. So it's got that flat back to it. So if you like those, you know, stereotypical 61 SG style necks, you're gonna like this. The frets, not quite as good as the Alex Lifeson signature, but not quite as scratchy as they used to be. The finish is like that semi-gloss, so if you hate the full-on gloss look and feel, you don't quite have that, but it's definitely not a satin finish either. It's a high-quality finish. And another thing about these is they're advertising them as they partnered with the custom shop to make them. Eh, that, that, that's just marketing. Don't buy too much into that. It's inspired by Gibson Custom. Sure, it says Gibson on the back plate now. They also said that for the 59-style reissues. These were not made in the custom shop. I get some people confused about that in the comment section a lot. They're like, hey, did you hear about the new Epiphones being made in the Gibson Custom Shop? No, th this is just Epiphone called up the Custom Shop and said, hey, what, what do you guys do for your Custom Shop SG standards? And they go, we do this, this, and this. And then Epiphone does this. So that's just marketing hype. Don't don't buy too much into that. But as I've already explained to you, so far it's a good deal if you were shopping other Epiphones. It does not look like we get any type of fancy COA with these, but not being like a Joe Bonamassa exclusive or anything, I wasn't really expecting it. But you've got an Epiphone sticker, another Epiphone sticker, another Epiphone sticker, Epiphone promotional material, another Epiphone sticker, believe it or not, and another... No, just kidding, it's just a quality control thing. And hey, download the Gibson app. 14 day free trial. But all right, let's go ahead and throw this thing on the workbench to take a look at its specs and then get to that playing demo. Inside the Epiphone 61 Les Paul SG standard, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So you've got a tenon cover and you've got a regular pick guard. The tenon cover is just black, single ply, nothing too fancy. It's called a tenon cover because it covers over the tenon that connects the neck to the body. You will notice there is a pretty sizable ding right there that thankfully this covers over. But the pick guard is actually really nice quality. It's a five ply material, black, white, black, white black on the back side but i did notice there was like a black streak on the edge of that pick guard right there i was unsuccessful in cleaning that up not quite sure what that is but that's an extra pointy pick guard but now our pickups were they telling the truth do we indeed have gibson pups yes we do first bucker two in the neck first bucker three in the bridge it still has the kind of larger epiphone style pick rings though and the epiphone style springs but at the same time since they're kind of thicker that kind of mimics some of the historic style ones but now looking in here, we do indeed have a long neck tenon. You can see where the neck tenon ends right here. Then you've got some markings in here, likely in Chinese, because the guitar and the case are both made in China. Then inside our bridge pickup cavity, we've got a QR code. That just seems to pull up the serial number and the code for this guitar. So it's basically just all the same numbers and stuff that you see right there. But underneath the sticker, you can see the mahogany body right there without any finish. Otherwise, in the cavities, they actually look pretty clean. You can see the two-piece seam line right there. But let's be real here, not that hard to see it on the front. <laughs> but our pickup's reading within the circuit. 8.45k ohms for our bridge. Our neck is rocking 8.07. 
And then our middle position somewhere in between, 4.13. Three-way toggle switch, two volumes, two tones, one for each pickup. Output jack is located on the front, and our bridge and tailpiece are the Epiphone lock tone style. You can kind of see that gripper bar right there. But I will say, out of all the Epiphones I've taken apart, this is the easiest one to get these things off. The bridge was kind of light, but the tailpiece is full weight. They both read Epiphone on the back side of them. But even this Loctone tailpiece was a lot easier to get off than normal, so I don't know if that's a bad batch or if it doesn't really matter. Maybe that's actually a good thing, who knows? <laughs> But this bridge is meant to mimic a Gibson ABR-1, but it still has studs within the body. Well, now we'll just look at the rest of this finish. But I believe Epiphone calls this finish aged gloss. It's like a gloss finish that's just been kind of played in. It's kind of just like an in-between a satin and a gloss finish is the best way to put it. I'd say they did a pretty good job carving the SG horns. They've got decent contours to it. So, so far, I'm pretty happy with this. I really like that this example just had, you know, a little bit of flame characteristics. It's nice to have something a little bit more special that not all of them will have. So moving on from our mahogany body, we've got the mahogany neck with the Indian laurel fretboard. That's the only spec that I really wish we could change. Get real rosewood back on the Epiphone high-end ones. Like, I would actually be willing to compromise the one-piece neck in order to get a rosewood fretboard because, I mean, nothing against Indian laurel, it just doesn't feel as good to me. Like, you can run your nail along it and, I mean, you just feel all the wood grain. But it looks the part, right? This is actually a pretty nice looking board, but please do remember I conditioned it. So that darkens up the color a bit. As is typical with most Epiphones, you probably want to get them professionally polished when you get it. They always kind of have that scratchy feeling. And if you want to know why your hands are turning black, it's actually because of the frets, not necessarily the strings. It's always the frets that have some black to it. So that's what actually comes off after you rub them a bit. There you go. So if you actually took this to a guy who has like actual buffing compounds and polishing for your frets, I'm sure most of that could be taken off. But you've got the acrylic trapezoid inlays. Looks like 22 medium jumbo style frets, 12 inch radius, 24 three quarter inch scale length. Nothing too funny with that. New bone nut with neck dimensions of 1.68 inches. Okay, so kind of skinny there, but then it definitely fattens up 2.07 by the 12th. I'd imagine this would be pretty darn skinny. 0.82 at the first fret neck depth and 0.89 by the 12th. All right, I'm just curious. How about all the way up here? 0.93 at the 18th. So that just stays really skinny consistently up and down the neck. Here's that neck profile at the first and 12th fret. You can see it's a very wide feeling neck, almost a D shape, but still has the curvature of a C on the back. Moving on to our face of the headstock, same aged gloss finish. Epiphone Kalamazoo style headstock. You got your Epiphone logo done up with the crown. But the truss route on this one, that route is not very clean. Like there's so much wood splintering and it's like all matted together. I was able to clean that out. I just took my screwdriver and ran it across the side. That all came off real easily. So if you run into that too, you can just do the same thing. I mean, I'm sure there's better ways to do it than just doing this, but it did the job. But it also showed how quickly the factory also could have did that. But look at this, double ring Klusen tuners. Man, I always love that, especially when they have the like bushing style. It's secured by a bushing instead of a nut and washer. That's always a classic look. The truss rod cover reads Les Paul because, well, SGs were Les Pauls for a couple of years as we were talking about earlier. Another QC thing that I just see on absolutely every Epiphone I've ever documented is the truss rod cover screws are always crooked. They're never seated perfectly flush. It's strange. Moving on to the back side, we've got a strap button at the base of the heel and one down here. Again, you can see your two-piece mahogany body and here's our electronics. So they are indeed still CTS pots, but these don't look like the Gibson USA CTS ones. I'm wondering if there's actually different grades of CTS or if they're having these specially made for them. It does not look like we're getting the orange drop capacitors though. And that's because they've upgraded them to Mallory capacitors, which likely has something to do with the original SGs. So hey, that's another difference that I didn't realize between the now called 60s SGs from Epiphone's original collection lineup. But I really do like this backplate. I, I think the whole inspired by Gibson Custom Shop is a bit of a marketing gimmick, but it looks nice back here. 
but they did the same thing they did for the Gibson Custom Shop ones. Nice work, Larry. So that's the guy who basically made up the SG, or at least the guy that gets the most credit. So that's what that's about. The Gibson Custom Shop iterations, they also had it. You can check that out in the review and demo. But now we can move on to our mahogany neck. There's no scarf joint down there to graft the heel onto the neck. This is all one solid piece. Same thing as we were talking earlier. No scarf joint right here. Does it really matter in the long run? No, but it's a nice spec. It makes it closer to the Gibson version. These are handcrafted in China, set up in the USA. And here's our serial number dating it to 2021. With double ring, double line, Epiphone style Gluson tuners. Pretty cool. But our last spec to capture is the weight. This one's six pounds, 14 ounces. And you might be asking yourself, if these are 61 SGs, why, why don't we have the cool Vibrolas on it? I'm actually really glad they decided to leave those off of these because in my opinion, this is just the best SG that Epiphone has had publicly available in a long time. It's got the Gibson pickups, nice electronics, all that. I don't think we need the Vibrola unit for the tuning instability and whatnot. You can still buy the original collection one and upgrade one, but as far as, you know, coming stock from the factory with higher end pickups, I think this is a great offering that they're throwing into their lineup. I do find it kind of strange that they're bringing it to the lineup right after the 60th anniversary, but they probably wanted to sell the Gibson Custom Shops and wait for that lineup to run before they brought these out. So let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this thing sounds. neck divey instrument eh, kind of like it's not so bad that I hate playing it but if you nudge it yeah it definitely does want to fall now it's gonna vary example to example if you want one that's not as neck divey find one that has a heavier body so buy from a dealer that lists how much they weigh that'd be my best advice right there or you can buy a weight put it in your back control panel I know I've seen somebody actually make a heavier control panel back here just to weigh the guitar down there's a bunch of different ways to make a neck divey guitar not as neck divey but could be an issue on this model. So let's go ahead and grab our tones, starting with our neck pickup. Sounds pretty good, but I'll be honest, the action's kind of a little bit high. I think my finger pressure is kind of bending it out of tune. Not the most comfortable setup I've had on one of these, so you might need to do your own personalized setup as you really normally have to do on Epiphones anyways. So now let's try the middle position. We'll do a similar riff. Bridge pickup, same stuff. Thank you. 
say it sounds pretty good. It's really the neck pickup that steals the show for me personally, though. <laughs> And the middle position plays both of them really well. So you tell me, do these pickups in this Epiphone sound good? and try some distortion now. Pickups are very touch sensitive. I mean, you can go from this. Now that we know all about the Gibson SG Standard 61 style, what are my final thoughts on this one? I think it's great that Epiphone is offering this in their lineup. It makes complete sense if you were shopping for other Epiphone SGs, thinking about upgrading them to higher end electronics and Gibson pickups. It's a no brainer in that case. Yes, 100% worth the money. However, as I was telling you earlier, you can buy a lot of guitars in the $850 price point. So it just really depends what you yourself are looking for. As far as shortcomings of this instrument, uh, sometimes the neck diviness. Just throw your strap button up here, Tony Iommi style. That'd be another way to balance this out. Definitely plan on having a professional setup. I mean, this wasn't bad, but it definitely does still feel a little bit higher as compared to the Gibson guitars that I've been playing quite often. It would have been nice to have seen a rosewood fretboard on here, but I guess we, we don't have too much options. I actually do enjoy this finish. It's somewhere between that satin and gloss. So you've got the, the playability niceness of the satin, but yet still the high quality look of as being an aged gloss. And let's face it, this thing looks phenomenal. I love the shape of this. You don't normally get that on the Epiphone SG, so it's nice that they've introduced that and given you a way to have, you know, actual real wood tops and none of that, you know, weird flame veneered sapele woods on top and back. Because let's face it, some of those can kind of look goofy. They don't look traditional. I mean, you might say, hey, this one has some flame figuring in it. Why do you like this one? Well, it's because that's just fancy wood grain. Not all of those are going to have that. So this is a very traditional looking SG. I think it's well worth the upgrade money if you were already shopping for one of these. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this guitar with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description. Mm -hmm.